How's it? Dr. Rudy again. You'd think that with my looks, medical degrees and massive earning power that women would be falling over themselves to get into my bed. And you'd be right. But as much as women gravitate towards a civilized man with several degrees and a substantial property portfolio, at a deep level they all have a secret hankering for a bit of rough. Just open any Mills and Boone if you can stomach it. All the stories are about lovely girls that engage the Lord's naughty but end up running off with Shane the chauffeur or Jack the jockey. That's why when I take a lady out for an evening, I make sure I sandpaper my hands. A brief rub and my upper middle class Lily Whites will have a grainy working class sheen to rival any stable boy or grease monkey. Believe me, women can't resist a sophisticated piece of rough. And when you touch the ladies with these blue collar babies, their subconscious goes crazy. So remember your sandpaper and they'll be putty in your rough hands. Bye now. I personally don't know about the whole tradesman thing with girls because I was a tradesman for two years and I never got any. Women are attracted to a man scent. They swear. <laughs> it's the uniform, the body. The coin slot. My ex-girlfriend actually used to like me coming home dirty, you know. There's something about transgressing boundaries of class as well as gender. There's something more taboo about blue-collar masculinity. It's less, less constrained or something. I guess a lot of guys are feminine these days, and so when you've got a real masculine sort of guy, it's sort of it's a nice thing. But I don't know if I would want, I'd want to fling, but I don't think I'd want a relationship. As a modern woman, I love a bit of rough trade. It's a rough and tradesman-y. The only problem is you can never take them to dinner parties because as soon as the conversation moves away from football or sewer management, it becomes painfully obvious that they don't know anything about anything. Now, obviously, I would never force a working man to read books. That would be cruel. But I do know a way you can gently jam a bit of culture into their head without it doing him any harm. How's it? Many men suffer from a condition known commonly as fear of PDA, public displays of affection. It is simply a need for personal space in public and is a function of our desire not to look like pansies. Women, however, have an innate need to touch and no matter how much we try and get them to stay away, they still can't help themselves. They just don't get it. Lucky for us men, I've discovered a method of deterrence every woman understands. Ever since they were little girls shopping with their mothers, women have been trained to respect the check out the Vida bar. Watch what happens when I violate the protocol. See how the reaction is so ingrained it's automatic. Well men, this learned pattern of behaviour can be used very effectively to deter her from violating your personal space. Watch how I use it. See how it works? Watch I get even more space. With one of these bars, you too can enjoy a relationship free of the risk of looking like a pansy. Bye now. Cheers. How's it, ladies? Your body image is an important part of your self-esteem. And unfortunately, not everyone has the body of Elle McPherson or even Mimi. Women like Sula here have to go through life in the knowledge they will never reach that perfect level of attractiveness and desirability. But even people with slightly disgusting physiques need to be assured they are attractive. And against all the odds, it turns out to be possible. The key is to have a prompt. I've just pasted this photo of Sula onto some nameless fatty I've cut from a weight loss magazine. Now, whenever she has guests, they'll inquire about who that is, because people are drawn to the abnormal. Obviously, they won't say, who is this grotesquely fat woman? They'll say something like, is this your sister? And that's when Sula explains this was actually her before she lost all her weight. Immediately, they'll start congratulating her on her marvellous achievement and telling her how fantastic she looks now. And there you have it. Good body image for the person who doesn't have a good body. So don't go without flattery and compliments just because you don't deserve them. Bye now. How's it? Dr. Rudy here. You know it's hard in these politically correct times to know if you are being chivalrous or chauvinistic. 
For instance, when you take a woman out for dinner, how do you know if you should pay for a meal or if you are going Dutch? The answer is in the meal she orders. For example, if she skips the entree, then orders a salad for her main, then claims she's on a diet when the dessert menu arrives, well then you should pick up the bill. It would be rude not to. On the other hand, if she orders an entree, followed by something rich and heavy for her main, then a dessert after that, well then you should let her pay for herself because it's quite clear she has no intention of having sex with you at the end of the night. That's right. She won't want to get naked and physical with you on an extremely full stomach, so Dutch it is. The best thing about this is that the meal you pay for is always the cheaper meal. Just remember to keep on your toes. Some women will order everything on the menu, then just pick at it, leaving most of the meal on a plate. This means there probably will be sex at the end of the night. But it's expensive, so it's just best not to get involved with a woman like this. So men, there you have it. When should you pay? Let her decide. Bye now. How's it? Dr. Rudy here. And I must say, these are sad times we live in. It's got to the stage where an honest, red-blooded man can't tell a woman what he thinks of her bottom and what he'd like to do to it without being physically assaulted by the woman and sacked from his job. So much for freedom of speech. Women are always saying they want men to express their feelings. But when you do, you end up with one of these. Don't worry, my friend. I have a solution. When you speak to women, there's no need to think before you speak, so long as you speak a bit differently. It's a fact of life. You can say exactly what you want about the most intimate reaches of a woman's anatomy, as long as you sound gay when you say it. I have to sound happy. No, you have to sound homosexual. Don't worry, impersonating a homosexual isn't as daunting as you might believe. Say exactly what you really want to say to a woman, only this time. Speak through your nose, lisp your sibilance and say, girlfriend, at the end of each sentence. You try. Oh, I'd love to sink my teeth into that pert little butt, girlfriend. You're so naughty. Oh, look at the swing and that step. I can tell you like taking it both ways, girlfriend. Excellent. It really is as easy as that. Now women will love listening to you talk dirty because they think you don't really mean it. And no one expects homosexuals to be politically correct. If they were, they wouldn't enjoy sodomy. So just remember, when you speak through your nose, you can speak from the heart. Bye now. They have a tendency to make women feel very comfortable. So, yeah, I'm sure they can get away with a few things as opposed to s- straight men. At our age, it's kind of cool to pretend or make girls think that you might have sort of tendencies that way. There yeah, are a lot of gay guys coming in this shop too. They get away with it, yeah, no problem at all. And they say whatever they want, the girls just laugh and hug them. If we say anything like that, you know, I'll be in jail. So, yeah, especially with my haircut. The girls love it. <laughs> so do the boys. <laughs> How's it? Dr. Rudy again. You know, at times I'm inclined to believe that women have supernatural powers. One of the most amazing is the ability of a woman to spot a blonde hair on your coat from the other side of the room. It belongs to a golden retriever. It's as if women have an enhanced radar for hair colour that's not their own when it's on something that belongs to them. Like you. Today I'm going to show you how to put this information to great use. Why is it that women have so much trouble backing out of the driveway? Whilst we men cannot begin to understand it, still we must deal with it. It seems like she can't even see the fence. So why not use the information we have just learned to make the fence more visible to your woman? By marking out the driveway with blonde hair, you'll be using a woman's naturally enhanced radar detector to help her navigate her way out of the driveway. There, let's see if it works. Absolutely amazing. Bye now. How's it? You know these days more than one in three marriages ends in divorce. And for the man, a divorce can be a messy and expensive procedure. If you're not careful, you could lose everything. 
But don't worry, men. There is a way to preemptively protect your property without the unpleasantness of a prenuptial agreement. All you have to do is marry a post-op transsexual. That's right, men. Get yourself a woman who was once a man. You see, in the Australian courts, a transsexual's gender is still determined by their birth sex. And in this country, same-sex marriages aren't recognised as a lawful union. Meaning, if you do head for the divorce courts, your significant other is entitled to absolutely nothing. This way you can have a wife with plenty of fun bits, but none of the litigious bits. And if you do stay married, you won't have to deal with childbirth, cellulite or menopause, which may be just the reason you stay together. Bye now. A coffee to go, please. Sure, would you like a cappuccino, latte, flat white, long black? A long black, thank you. Long black it is then. Do you take sugar? One, thank you. Sure. And are you having anything else with that today? Uh, no, thank you. Okay. It's a beautiful day out there today, isn't it? Yes, quite. Yeah, it's always such a bummer having to work on a day like today. Are you working today? Yes. Yeah. On a day like today, I reckon you should be either at the beach or in a beer garden or something like that. Don't you hate this? All you want to do is conduct a simple transaction quickly and the shop attendant bombards you with inane small talk. Come in here every day and make coffee. You could, of course, simply ignore her. But people might get the wrong impression and think that you're rude and arrogant. It's a living. (laughs) There you go. Have a wonderful day. But don't worry, there is a way to ensure the small talk is kept to a minimum whenever you're dealing with someone in the service industry. All you need is one of these electronic voice boxes, like the one used by Stephen Hawking. Simply type in what you want and let this little device do the talking for you. Good morning, what can I get you? Coffee black and one. Right. As soon as she hears this, she'll feel uncomfortable and won't ask any more questions, leaving you free of servant small talk. It's also perfect for taxis and hairdressers. There you go. That's all there is to it. Use the hawking advantage and enjoy the advantage of being disadvantaged. Bye now. How's it? Tonight I want to give all you manly men out there some wise advice about male bonding. It's not just about going to the pub or the rugby with your colleagues and getting drunk. It can be a much richer experience. It's all about talking and listening. Really talking and really listening. It's something women do with each other every day. And in 2003, it's something we men should be doing too. The next time you meet a friend, take the opportunity to sit down and have a heart to heart with each other. Really open up, talk about your hopes, your feelings, and most importantly, your relationships. What problems is your mate having with his girlfriend? What does his girlfriend want? What does he feel he isn't getting? So Michelle feels you're not attentive to her in bed and that you don't treat her like she's smart. How do you feel about that? Well, I don't know. Uh, I feel like all she thinks about is herself. This way you get to learn what your friend isn't giving to his girlfriend. Then you can give it to her when his back is turned. She wants you to do what? I wouldn't do that either. It doesn't sound very hygienic. So when they start to open up, you should start taking notes and you'll be having sex with their woman before you know it. All right, so you've just betrayed a friend, but they should know better than to start squawking about their feelings and relationships like a bloody woman, and this will teach them to keep their trap shut so you can both enjoy the rugby. Bye now. So, how's Michelle looking these days? 